Today on this special bonus episode of Airbiz, we're going to go behind the Iron Curtain and take a look at the highlights of Soviet aviation engineering. For the purposes of this episode, I started an Air Scenario 2 game and ran a Moscow-based airline until 1988 for all Markov's planes to become available. Which is easier said than done, I might like, I might add. As you can see, Russian airlines can't buy from the Western manufacturers until the Cold War ends, which is rather unfortunate. First up is the Tupolev 154, which becomes available in 1968 in Scenario 1 and for the entirety of Scenario 2. It's not a very big plane of only 180 seats, it's not that impressive of a range 4,120 miles, but it's got the best fuel economy of anything Markov has to offer. Next up is the Illusion 62, available right from the beginning of Scenario 1 and in Scenario 2 up until 1991 or 1992, I'm not sure. But in Scenario 1, it's the only plane a Moscow-based airline is going to have for the first few years. 195 seats is now all that big, and the fuel economy leaves something to be desired over the seat rank. With a range of 6,250 miles, it has a range advantage over 707s and DC-8s in Scenario 1, which is something to be said for it. The Illusion 86, which is introduced in 1977, is the largest of Markov's planes, with 370 seats. However, Russian planes are major gas guzzlers, and this model is the worst defender of rock-bottom fuel economy. Furthermore, the range is terrible, not even 3,000 miles. You'd only really use this for short-distance, high-traffic routes, and the high cost of running one of these means you won't turn much of a profit, if anything at all. It's just not a good plane overall. Finally, the Illusion 96 becomes available in 1988 is arguably the best thing Markov has to offer. It's a decent sized plane of 300 seats. It's got a respectable range of 6,870 miles, which is the longest of the four, but still doesn't match the 8,000 mile ranges of Boeing, McDonnell, Douglas models. The middle and fuel economy you see means you can use these without running a route into the red. Still, Russian planes just aren't all very good. Keeping a Moscow-based airline out of the red is a real struggle in Scenario 2, with higher operating costs across the board and all the inefficient low-mileage planes you have to use until the Cold War ends and you can finally buy from the Western player plane manufacturers. I'm not going to be de demonstrating a game from using Moscow. Anyway, I just wanted to show off everything in, in Aerobiz, so here you have it for the four airlines I couldn't show you in the main LP episodes. That's all I had for this bonus episode, and I'll see you next time for a main episode again.